Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to run GitLab Runner inside of a Kubernetes cluster. In order to follow along with the tutorial, uh, you'll need a GitLab server. You'll need a Kates cluster that you can administrate, uh, the kubectl a CLI tool installed, and uh, the Helm client installed as well. In this tutorial, I'm only gonna focus on installing and configuring uh, the GitLab Runner program uh, on a Kubernetes cluster via a Helm chart that's provided by uh, GitLab. And I hope you enjoy this video. And if you do, please consider uh, throwing a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is provide a quick refresher on how uh, the GitLab runner program works. Uh, specifically um, the type of executors that are available. And if you're not familiar with how the GitLab Runner program works, I suggest you take a look at my prior video uh, where I go into more detail about how the program works um, and what executors are and how they work, but I'll provide uh, kind of a refresher here. So when you install the GitLab Runner program on a machine, you have to specify the executor, and the executor is basically um, a way to specify the runtime environment for uh, GitLab CI pipeline jobs. And uh, one of the first environments, the runtime environments, or the first executor is the shell executor. And so it's going to execute a pipeline job on uh, in the shell environment of the machine that the GitLab runner is installed on. With other executors, you can, like the Docker executor, you can actually uh, have the GitLab Runner program spin up a Docker container and execute the pipeline job within that container. Um, so the executor that we are going to be using in this video is the Kubernetes executor uh, for GitLab Runner. And with the Kubernetes executor, the GitLab Runner program will either be running inside of a Kubernetes cluster or it will be uh, running outside of a Kubernetes cluster, connecting to that cluster and then spawning pods uh, within uh, that cluster that will be running the GitLab CI pipeline jobs. So we're going to be taking a look at a lot of this documentation. I think the GitLab documentation is great, but it's very dense and there's a lot of it. And so it's hard to find uh, kind of what you're looking for and understand uh, what is meaningful to your specific use case. Uh, so I'll provide links to all the documentation that's relevant to this video uh, in the video description. In the example that I'm going to be demonstrating in this video, uh, the GitLab runner is going to be installed inside of the Kubernetes cluster, and it's not going to be running outside of the Kubernetes cluster, uh, connecting to it and spawning pods. It's going to be spawning uh, pods from within the cluster. So the question is, how do we install the GitLab runner program uh, in the Kubernetes cluster. And GitLab provides multiple ways to install the GitLab Runner program uh, in your Kubernetes cluster. So let's take a look at the documentation for the first method and the method that we'll be using in the video. We can install the GitLab Runner program uh, via a Helm chart that is supported by uh, GitLab. And this is, as you can see here, the official way of deploying a GitLab Runner instance into uh, your Kubernetes cluster. So like I was discussing before, uh, this chart will configure the GitLab Runner program to utilize the Kubernetes executor. And then when uh, the GitLab Runner program uh, receives a new job uh, from uh, GitLab, it will uh, provision a pod within the, the uh, GitLab Runner's uh, namespace and run it. And here you can see the prerequisites that I mentioned at the beginning of the video that you would need in order to um, get the GitLab Runner uh, program up and running via the Helm chart. So the instructions here are pretty straightforward and there's not too many steps uh, to take. The first step, and we'll follow it here, is to simply uh, copy this command where we add the Helm repository uh, for the GitLab uh, Helm chart that we wanna use. And uh, then we simply need to install the chart into uh, a namespace that we've already created or we create a new namespace. But before we uh, run the helm install command, we'll want to fill out the values.yaml file uh, for this helm chart, and that will 
uh, configure it with the uh, configure the manifest files with our uh, environment specific values. So for instance, if we're running an on-premise instance of GitLab, the GitLab URL is going to be different. Um, we'll also need to specify a GitLab runner registration token so that um, our GitLab runner program can authenticate with uh, the GitLab project or group. So to get started, I am going to copy this uh, Helm repo add command, and I'm going to navigate to my terminal. Now I've connected to uh, over SSH to my controller node, my uh, cluster controller node, and uh, I'm running a Raspberry Pi 4 cluster. So my worker nodes are uh, other Raspberry uh, Pi 4 um, computers, and I've installed the um, Cube Control uh, CLI on the controller node, as well as Helm, uh, the Helm client. So from this Raspberry Pi, I can control the uh, Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to paste the Helm repo add command into the command line, and I'm not going to execute it because I've already added the repository, but go ahead and hit enter and add that repository. And once you've added the repository, I'm gonna navigate back to uh, my browser. And since I'm not using Helm 2, uh, I'm not going to uh, run the Helm init command. Uh, and the next step would be to fill out the values.yaml file for this chart. Now, if you're not familiar with Helm, Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes. You can deploy an entire application to a Kubernetes um, a cluster using a Helm chart, which just kind of packages a lot of manifest files together and uh, bootstraps a uh, application into your Kubernetes cluster. And how it works is it templates all of the manifest files for your application. And then basically all you have to do is set the values uh, of those templated files in a values.yaml file. So what I'm going to do is navigate to the GitLab repository uh, hosting this, um, this Helm chart, uh, this GitLab runner Helm chart. And I'll share a link to this repository in the video description. Uh, but if I navigate to the top directory of the repository, uh, let's see, there should be a values.yaml file here at the bottom. And I can open that up and um, we could uh, download this file um, simply by clicking download. But what I want to do is download this file on the uh, uh, controller node, the Raspberry Pi controller node. Um, so what I'll do here is I'll open raw and I'll just copy this URL and I'm going to navigate back to my terminal and I can just wget and then the URL. I've already downloaded the values.yaml uh, file, so I don't need to uh, I don't need to download it again. Um, but you would just uh, download that file uh, to your uh, controller node or wherever you have whatever machine you have access to administrate the target Kubernetes cluster. Now going back to the documentation. Um, if I scroll down to the configuration uh, section, it shows the required configuration for the GitLab runner, specifically the required configuration in the values.yaml file. So you do need to set a couple of values at a minimum in order to get the GitLab runner program up and running correctly. Uh, the first uh, thing that you have to specify is the GitLab URL, which in our case, or in my case is going to be just gitlab.com. Uh, I'm not running like an on-premise instance or some private instance of GitLab. And then the second thing is the runner registration token. And uh, that registration token is uh, used to add new runners to uh, either your GitLab project or a GitLab group. In my case, I'm using uh, a GitLab project. So how do we get the re runner registration token? Well. We should navigate, in my case, I'm going to navigate to the GitLab project that I want to um, uh, execute uh, CI jobs in the Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes cluster. So I'm gonna navigate to my repository and then under uh, settings, 
I'm going to go to CICD. And then under runners, I'm going to uh, expand that. And here is my registration token. So I'm going to want to copy this token into the values.yaml uh, file uh, in, in order to uh, properly configure the GitLab runner that gets installed in the Kubernetes cluster. So make sure you copy that registration token and have it uh, saved somewhere or just easily accessible at least. And you'll notice here that it says set the token directly in the values.yaml file or store it in a Kubernetes secret. The best practice here is for sure going to be storing it in a secret uh, and making sure that it's encrypted. Um, but I'm not going to I'm not going to show that here. I'm just going to set it uh, in plain text directly in the values.yaml file. The other thing that needs to be configured that they don't mention in the required configuration, and it uh, kind of tripped me up, took me a little while to figure out, uh, is that you need to configure um, RBAC for your cluster, specifically the service account that GitLab is going to use in order to, to provision new pods. I don't remember exactly where they mentioned it, but somewhere in the documentation they say, like, make sure uh, the service user has the right permissions. And it's not explicitly stated um, in the instructions uh, anywhere. It was just like one line uh, that, was, that was kind of hard to find. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the values.yaml file. I've already set the values in my values.yaml file. But I do want to show you what the, um, the base uh, values.yaml file looks like uh, when you download it. So if I take a look at the values.yaml file, it's pretty large uh, file, but remember, we really only need to set um, like a couple of things. The first is the GitLab URL. Uh, so we would want to set, uh, set that to, in my case, I'm going to set it to gitlab.com. And then the registration token needs to be set uh, here. And then uh, the last thing that we would want to set is uh, we would want to configure uh, RBAC. Okay, so for RBAC support, uh, under here, if you set create to true, then uh, the Helm chart is automatically going to create a new service account and provide it with uh, the permissions that you specify here, the rules that you specify here. Okay, if you set it to false, then you need to specify what service account to use. So here you can see it says use the following Kubernetes service account name if RBAC is disabled in this Helm chart. And so you would just uncomment this out and specify which service account you want these rules applied to. So obviously here you would want to delete this empty, uh, empty set and uncomment these rules because this is what these are the permissions that would be required in order to properly provision pods and execute the GitLab uh, CI jobs. Now, the other thing, and this isn't like, this really isn't relevant unless you're running a Raspberry Pi cluster, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Um, but if you go down to the configuration, uh, this is where you would specify the GitLab runner's configuration. And under the configuration, when I was trying to run uh, this base configuration on my Raspberry Pi cluster, it was not working. And I ended up finding an issue uh, in GitLab with someone who encountered the same issue and they had to specify uh, a, a ARM64 specific um, image for not only the GitLab runner, but also the builder and helper uh, images that run inside of the GitLab runner uh, can, um, pod when it's in the Kubernetes cluster. And I'll show those values uh, in the values.yaml file that I edited as well. So let's take a look at the values.yaml file that I've edited. Uh, so I'm connected over SSH to uh, my Raspberry Pi controller node. And this is the values file that I'm, uh, I'm going to use uh, when deploying the Helm chart. So if I scroll down, I have the GitLab URL set to gitlab.com. I have the runner registration token set to the token of my um, uh, set to the token of my uh, GitLab project. 
So if I go back to here, you can see this is the registration token and it's the same uh, that I have here as well, okay? And then in addition to uh, setting those two values, if I scroll down to the RBAC section, uh, currently I have, um, I have RBAC set to true. So this is going to create a service account uh, that will be used in, um, in the namespace, uh, the GitLab runner namespace. And then I've simply uncom uh, uncommented the rules that were commented out in like the base uh, values.yaml file. And then finally, if we scroll down to the runner configuration section, uh, this is the configuration that I set and you only need to do this, you only need to change this if you are like me running, um, running the GitLab runner on a Raspberry Pi cluster, which I'm assuming is kind of a, a niche uh, use case. Um, but I had to update the GitLab runner image and the helper image to um, the correct like architecture. Uh, otherwise, I ran into kind of weird errors and it took me a little while to uh, finally uh, find an issue in GitLab where someone said, you know, this was a workaround to the issue. Uh, and they were also running on, on Raspberry Pis. So this isn't relevant uh, unless that's, uh, that's your use case as well. Right now I have the values.yaml file just sitting on my controller node. It's not backed up anywhere, it's not version controlled, but ideally you would version control the values.yaml file and uh, keep it with your code base, um, wherever that might be, if it's in a repository in GitLab. Okay, so now that we've updated the values.yaml file, if we take a look back at the uh, instructions here uh, for um, installing the GitLab runner program in our uh, Kubernetes cluster. For Helm 3, which is what I'm using, you can simply use the Helm install command. You specify the namespace uh, that the GitLab runner uh, should be installed in. You specify the release uh, and then the file, uh, use the dash F option to specify the values.yaml file that we edited and the Helm repository forward slash uh, Helm chart. So if I navigate back to my terminal and I'm going to do a reverse search here um, for the Helm install command that I used. So uh, Helm install specifying the namespace as GitLab runner. I also specified, and you'll wanna do this if you're um, installing it in a namespace that hasn't been created, I'm also using the create namespace option if this namespace uh, hasn't been created. Uh, and then specifying the release name, the, the file, which is the values.yaml file, and then the Helm repository and Helm chart, okay? I'm not going to use the create namespace because I did already create the GitLab runner, but I just wanted to show that option because you will want to use that if you're, uh, if you're wanting to install it in a new namespace. So once I run this command, I should be able to pretty quickly see the GitLab runner that's installed in this cluster uh, registered with my GitLab project. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And as you can see in the output, it says your GitLab runner should now be registered against the following uh, GitLab instance. And uh, it's in the runner namespace GitLab runner. Uh, I can use the describe uh, command. So kubectl describe pods in uh, specifically the GitLab runner pod and in the namespace uh, GitLab runner. And we can check the status of that pod. And so it looks like looking at the events, the GitLab runner pod has been started. So I'm going to navigate to my GitLab project and let's check if it successfully uh, registered with my GitLab project. So when I refresh the page, we should see uh, the GitLab runner uh, from the uh, Kubernetes cluster uh, registered. And sure enough, we do. This is the, uh, the GitLab runner that's running in my uh, Kubernetes cluster. Now I will say that not every time I've run that Helm install command, uh, this has worked. Uh, sometimes when I run the Helm install command, for whatever reason, it just, it doesn't register, and then after about 90 seconds, it says uh, there's like an unhealthy uh, readiness probe or something like that. It doesn't work. 
all I had to do was uninstall, uh, perform a Helm uninstall of that release, and then run the install again, and it seemed to work. So I don't know uh, specifically what causes those intermittent issues. So now that we have that runner registered, uh, we should be able to utilize it uh, when we execute uh, the pipeline, the GitLab CI pipeline that exists in this uh, GitLab project. So if I go to CI CD and then pipelines, uh, actually let's go to the editor just so you can see what the pipeline uh, looks like. It's very simple. It uses a Maven image and then it has a single stage called deploy. Um, has some variables set, it enables a cache, and then it has a single job called the deploy job. I did have, I commented out this um, maven deploy command because it was failing for whatever reason. I didn't want to get into all of those details because it wasn't really important to this uh, video. So I commented out that command and just left in the echo statement and that seemed to work uh, fine. So, um, Pretty simple pipeline, and if we go back to the pipelines page, I'm going to select run pipeline, and then I'll uh, select uh, run pipeline. And so if we go into the deploy job, uh, pretty soon we should see a console output, and it should show that you know it picked uh, our runner because I've disabled all other uh, runners. Uh, I disabled shared runners and it uh, is utilizing the runner that's uh, running on our Kubernetes, uh, our Kubernetes cluster. So as you can see at the top of the console output, it says uh, using the Kubernetes namespace GitLab runner, which is the one that uh, we created. It's using the Kubernetes executor with image Maven. So it uh, spawned a pod uh, that is running the Maven uh, image. And then it takes the usual steps uh, that a GitLab uh, pipeline typically does when it's configuring the environment within uh, the um, within the job, and uh, finally we see the echo statement. I think it's um, let's see, echo publishing Maven package to package registry, and then it uh, it uh, completes successfully. So that's really how easy it is to install and configure the GitLab runner program in your Kubernetes cluster and start utilizing uh, your Kubernetes uh, cluster's resources to facilitate uh, GitLab CI pipelines. And before I finish the video, I do want to specify uh, the other two methods that you can install the GitLab runner uh, program in your Kubernetes cluster. So the one that we covered in this video is via the Helm chart, and it's the official way to deploy GitLab Runner in the cluster. But you can also use two other methods. So if I navigate back to uh, the documentation, you'll see here in the documentation, it says uh, you can install on Linux, uh, Mac OS, Windows, Helm chart, uh, and then you have GitLab agent and operator. So these three methods are installing the GitLab Runner program uh, on a uh, Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes cluster. And I think that the documentation could do a better job at comparing uh, these different methods. I mean, I guess they kind of just expect, uh, expect you to know uh, what the differences are and how to compare these. Uh, but I kind of, it just took me some time to kind of understand uh, the differences and what the use cases would be. So in terms of ease, at least for me, and I think for any beginner, the Helm chart is probably the way to go. If you don't need a lot of customization or anything, you just need the basics, you want GitLab Runner running on your Kubernetes cluster, the Helm chart seems to be the way to go. Uh, it's the most like polished method of deploying GitLab Runner in a Kubernetes cluster. And then I think the next option would be the operator. And so if I expand, I have this tab open with uh, the operator documentation. So uh, they also offer a GitLab operator that you can install on an OpenShift cluster uh, or directly on Kubernetes. And the GitLab runner operator is kind of a heavier deployment of the GitLab runner program uh, in your Kubernetes cluster. If I look at the operator's um, GitLab repository, 
and navigate down here, it's it says the GitLab runner operator aims to um, do a few things here, but you'll notice uh, this specifically kind of uh, caught my eye. Uh, it allows you to aggregate and visualize metrics using Prometheus and Grafana. So I believe the operator is deploying a Grafana instance and a Prometheus instance uh, that's scraping metrics from the GitLab runner program as well as, I'm not certain, but uh, I believe it's, you know, uh, scraping metrics from pods that it provisions to execute jobs as well. Uh, so I think that you get a little bit more functionality when you deploy the GitLab runner operator. Like I said before, the Helm chart is kind of like the simplest way to go. Uh, it's lightweight uh, in that sense that, you know, you're not getting a Prometheus instance and a Grafana instance to visualize all of the metrics related to the GitLab runner program. So this is another method of installing the GitLab runner uh, via the GitLab runner operator. And the final uh, method of installing the uh, GitLab runner is via the GitLab agent. Um, so if you want to connect uh, your GitLab uh, project to a Kubernetes cluster and you intend on deploying your the code base of your project to that cluster, uh, you can implement a GitOps workflow with the GitLab agent. So I think that, uh, and again, I'm not like an expert on this. I haven't spent a lot of time uh, in this particular area, but I believe the GitLab agent is kind of like um, Argo CD or Flux in that it implements a GitOps workflow where you install the agent in your cluster and then the agent is monitoring uh, GitLab repositories that you specify for any changes. And if changes happen to Kubernetes manifest files in those repositories, it will automatically apply those updated manifests uh, to the cluster. So you can use the GitLab agent to not only deploy your code base to a, a Kubernetes cluster, but you can also use the GitLab agent to um, install the GitLab runner program, install and manage the GitLab runner program. So in my opinion, I mean, if you're looking at like DevOps best practices and where DevOps is headed, uh, you know, having a GitOps workflow is great. I think that this might be the most, uh, I mean, at least from what I can tell, it seems like a more involved deployment of GitLab runner because you have an, an additional prerequisite of installing and configuring the GitLab agent. Uh, but if you really want that GitOps workflow, I guess this would be the the way to go. And I think that, you know, in the future, this is also where it's headed as well. Um, they do specify that the GitOps workflow is the recommended workflow uh, if you're going to be uh, connecting a Kubernetes cluster to your GitLab project. So in the documentation for installing GitLab runner via the agent, uh, they specify, you know, this is a GitOps workflow where uh, you create the values.yaml file. You also create a runner manifest file. And then uh, the agent will monitor those manifest files in uh, the uh, GitLab project. And if any changes are made to the GitLab uh, runner manifest files, it will automatically update uh, the, the cluster accordingly. So I would definitely encourage you to take a look and research all of these methods on your own. Uh, but I felt like for the purposes of this video, uh, the most straightforward methods seem to be, and the lightweight method seem to be uh, via the Helm chart, If especially if you just kind of want to test it out and see how it works. So that's pretty much all I had for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, that you found it valuable. If you did, uh, please consider throwing a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave them below in the comments. Uh, as I said before, I'm going to try and link most of this documentation in the video description so that you can kind of quickly access it uh, and uh, you don't have to search around for it uh, like I did. Thanks for watching.